Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Management of patients with pacemaker and automated defibrillator, <coughs> not only a quarter interference. The objectives of this lecture is to know the basics of CIEDs or cardiac implanted electronic devices, their functions, uh, their indications, uh, an aesthetic management of patients with these devices, pre-operative, intra- and post-operative, special situations that we face with these devices and the, the management of these devices in our facility. The history of CIED started in 1958. This was the time where first battery-operated pacemaker was invented. In 1969, the AP sequential pacing was first tried and first automated uh, in, in Automated impl uh, internal cardioverter and defibrillator was first used in 1980s and it had the FDA approval in 1985. And in 1988, there was a great advance that rate modulation was added to the pacemakers. The components of an ordinary pacemaker, or generally speaking about pacemaker, it contains a generator that generate electrical circuit and contains the electrical circuit. It may give uh, a pace, give electricity to pace the heart, or sense the heart, or give a shock. Uh, and an electrode, that is the part embedded inside the myocardium or epicardium, and the connection between both parts, this is the lead. This is, for example, an, a lead the end part, the end point, the, that, that part on the right side of the screen with the coil, this is the electrode, and the remaining part, the thick part, is a shock uh, lead, and the remaining part is the lead connecting to the um, generator. Electrodes are either unipolar or bipolar. It is nice to understand this uh, issue, because unipolar we know that electricity passes from cathode to anode. This is generally speaking, the cathode in unipolar is the electrode that is embedded inside the heart, while the anode is the case of the, of the generator itself. This means that electricity has to pass from the electrode inside the heart to the generator that usually be embedded at the pectoral region. This is a, a large area that electricity has to pass. Compared to the bipolar, where cathode and anode are on the same lead, and both are inserted inside the heart, where the cathode is inside the myocardium and the anode may be in another lead inside the myocardium or in the same lead. So the electricity does not go outside the heart. This issue will be important because interference will be more common with unipolar than bipolar, okay? Now we are talking about pacemaker codes. As we know, there is five international uh, position, five letters that code the pacemaker function and pacemaker characteristics. These codes in position, uh, in the first position, it is the chamber based. This may be none, atrium, ventricle, or dual. <coughs> the second chamber is the chamber sensed. This, is, this may be non atrium, ventricle, or dual. The, the third letter is the response of this device to what it sensed. It may be triggered or inhibited, or dual. Triggered means that when the pacemaker feels the, the, the pulsations coming from the heart, it will give a shock, give a, a, a pace, a pacing electricity, but this will not pace the heart, as the heart already has its heartbeat. The heart, again, the pacemaker felt the ventricle trying to contract, felt its electricity, and it will be triggered to give electricity to this heart, but on the R wave, as if it will not work. On the R wave, no electricity can polar, depolarize the heart. It is already depolarized. This is the triggered. 
bad thing about trigger is that it, it will exhaust the battery of the device soon. But it is a safe to use and it will not go, it, uh, make the patient go to VF or VTAC because it will hit the, the R wave in the absolute refractory period where no electricity, whatever, how potent is it, will do anything to this heart. The other issue in the trigger mode is that I'm giving electricity in a heart beating with, with no need for this electricity. This will increase the injury the pacemaker may cause, increase the fibrosis that the pacemaker may cause to this heart. The next letter is the eye, where the pacemaker is inhibited, when it feels the, pul the heart pulsating, when it feels the electricity coming from the heart, it will not give a pacing uh, electricity. And this is logic. The heart is already contracting. The fourth letter is programmability, fourth, fourth position. This is recent. Actually, the, the three first letters are the one commonly used. Any institution are mainly concerned with the first three letters. The remaining two letters are recent letters that are not widely used. They are applied to uh, more advanced devices that are extremely expensive. Um, although we, sometimes we meet them. The fourth letter is programmability. It may be programmable or multi-programmable or have a, a rate modulation. Rate modulation means that when, the, when a patient does, does an exercise or increase his minute ventilation, increase his hemodynamic requirements of a, a, a more heart rate, a more fast heart rate, the pacemaker will respond to this by increasing the pacing rate it gives to this heart. Sensing minute ventilation will increase the rate. This is simple but very important for patients. It will modify their quality of life. The, the, the pacemaker is reacting with them. The, the fifth position is multi-site multi pacing. Uh, this is done uh, in some patients when we need to make the both ventricles contract. So we insert an electrode in each ventricle, in the left and right ventricle. Or the, the atria, I put two electrodes in it. This will make sure that electricity will go. Whatever the condition of the heart, at least one of these electrodes will pace it. Common codes, for, for example, we meet AOO. This is where the atrium is paced. Nothing is sensed and not, there is no response. So this is as an, an asynchronous mode when it gives atrium pacing, whatever the, the patient's original heart rate or whatever the patient's original atrial function. This most commonly seen with sick sinus syndromes. The next code is VOO, where the ventricle is paced and still there is no sense, in, no sense of chamber or no response. This is done with complete heart block, and this is logic because if I uh, used the first one, the AOO, in a patient with complete heart block, it will not transmit the paced uh, electricity to the ventricle. So there will be no cardiac output. I didn't solve anything. Pacing the ventricle is VOO without any sense. VVI is ventricle paced and ventricle sensed and the response is inhibition. The ventricle, when it contracts, the pacemaker senses its contraction, senses its electricity and it will not give a, a, a pacing electricity it will be inhibited. This is also done in complete heart block and, and especially with AF. The treble D, both chambers are paced and both chambers are uh, uh, sensed and the response to this is dual. Dual means it may trigger, may be triggered or may be inhibited. According to the pace the, 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 the stimulus it senses. If it senses from the atrium, it will wait to sense from the ventricle and accordingly it will be triggered to give a pacing electricity or not. The DDI is inhibited. 
dual pacing, dual sensing, and the responses inhibition. Both of these are used in AV block and SA nodal uh, diseases, um, with or without heart block. The automated implanted cardioverter and defibrillators, or implanted cardioverter defib, these are combined defibrillator, cardioverter, and pacemakers. I'm confirming that these devices contain a pacemaker. They are not only ICDs. They evaluate the ECG of the patient according to a processor in these devices. They, they evaluate the ECG morphology, its rate, and QRS width. And the processor in these devices decide whether this rhythm deserve a shock or a cardioversion, or this is a normal rhythm. All the options are available, cardioversion, defibrillation, and overdrive pacing. Overdrive pacing is a nice idea. If the patient is in, for example, VTEC with a heart rate of 180 or something, the ventricle, the pacemaker would not like to give a shock for every uh, tachycardia. It may try to increase its pacing rate, increase it to 250, for example. And once there is capture, the VTAC focus, the focus that is giving VTAC or SVT, will be uh, uh, giving its electricity in the absolute refractory period of the pacemaker. So the focus will not work, as if we are cutting the circuit of this focus, of this re-entry focus. And hence, the, the pacemaker will start to, to decrease gradually its heart rate until it reaches the normal limit. This skips giving a shock to a patient, as shock may be painful and will in, improve the battery uh, survival of the device. This is, for example, an uh, ICD implanted. As you see, there is a, a coil, a thick radio-opaque line at the junction of SVC and right atrium, and another thick radio-opaque line at the right ventricle. These two lines, two thick radio-opaque lines, are the shocking wires, or shocking probes. Usually they insert two, to have the ability to give a shock in multi-direction, in the HM only, in the HM2, the pacemaker casing, or from the ventricle to the pacemaker pacing, uh, casing, or from the two shocking coils. This is an ICD in, in our hospital. And this is how it works. You see an, an, a rapid, uh, irregular, narrow complex tachycardia. The pacemaker in the lower diagram senses it and decides to give a shock. In the middle, it gave a shock and it returned back to a sinus rhythm or a slower heart rate. The codes for ICDs are similar a little bit to these of the pacemaker. The most important fun function is the first one. In the pacemaker, it was the paste chamber. Pacemaker, it was the paste chamber in the first position. Here it is the shock in the first position, it's logic. Shock in the first position with the same coding, AVD. The second position is the antitachycardia pacing. It may be non, atrium, ventricle, or dual. And the third position for tachycardia detection, it may be via electrocardiogram or hemodynamic or uh, hemodynamic sensing, uh, uh, hemodynamic uh, monitoring of the patient via pacemaker. And the fourth via uh, fourth position is the anti bradycardia pacing that may be uh, non ATM or both. Indications for insertion of pacemakers and ICDs the first one is the heart block. Not all types of heart block, we specifically uh, concerned with the second degree or Mobis type 2 heart block. This is the first uh, upper one, first uh, second degree heart uh, block type 2 or the third degree heart block, that is the complete heart block, where there is complete AV dissociation. The third uh, cause uh, in heart block is symptomatic other types, for example, left bundle branch block or bifascicular block. 
the lower uh, diagram is for a left bundle branch blocking. And this is the bifascicular block where there is right bundle and left anterior hemiblock. It may also be right bundle with left posterior hemiblock. Bradyarrhythmias is the second indication for insertion of pacemakers or ICDs. The most common cause of insertion of pacemakers at ever is the sex sinus syndrome. This is multiple syndromes uh, causing the sinus not to work properly. One of these is the wandering atrial pacemaker. There is no specific focus. As you see here, there is no specific P wave shape, not consistent. P wave may be positive, neutral, equivocal, or negative. This is wandering atrial pacemaker and it's a, a, a cause for insertion or an indication for insertion of pacemakers. Or the other cause it may severe irresponsive sinus bradycardia or drug toxicity, for example, calcium channel F or beta blocker or whatever, when there is no response to normal maneuvers and the patient is hemodynamically unstable or symptomatizing. The third uh, indication is tachyarrhythmias for overdrive pacing, where we insert an ICD or pacemaker with this capability of overdrive pacing. The indications for uh, AICD in insertion is variable. This include long QT interval and including long QT syndromes. The Brugada syndrome, this is a right bundle branch block with ST elevation in V1 to 3. As you see in the lower picture, this is the Brugada syndrome. The C letter is in the area where there may be a notch in the T wave, a depression in the T wave, and the T wave will rise again and continue. This is very characteristic of Brugada syndrome. It has many types that are in interest of cardiologists more than us. The sixth, the sixth indication is uh, patients will, with heart failure, low ejection fraction less than 35, especially with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy or dilated cardiomyopathy. On one condition that these patients have a left bundle branch block where there is a slight delay between the right ventricular contraction, left ventricular contraction, and this is the indication for cardiac resynchronization therapy. This is a type of biventricular pacing that controls the contraction of right ventricle and left ventricle to make it synchronous. CRT, as I said, is a biventricular pacing. It is used in moderate to severe heart failure in patients less than 35% ejection fraction. Conduction delay disturbs right and left ventricular synchrony, and this decreases the cardiac output. It is done with sequential pacing of the atria, right ventricle, and left ventricle. This is a diagram showing the CRT. As you see on the left, there is coronary sinus on the right side of the screen. There is uh, coronary sinus pacing electrode. It is inserted inside the coronary sinus, and this is the way we pace the left ventricle. Another electrode is seen in the right atrium, mm -hmm and in the right ventricle. This device also has a capability of shocking the patient. This is an ICD and CRT in the same time. As we, as we see, there is SVC shock coil and RV shock coil. This is a CRT and ICD. There is many factors affecting pacing threshold. First of all, what is the pacing threshold? Is this important? Actually, pacing threshold is all what is pacemaker about. Will it, the device gives electricity. Will this electricity reach the myocardium or not? Will it be effective or not? The myocardium itself may be very sensitive to pacing. It may just have a, a small spark and it will run. But other factors, many factors, can make the, this threshold very high that it needs more and more electricity to be paced. This, of, this is of so much of our interest because we meet all or almost all of these factors inside the OR. 
First factors that may increase the, pay, the pacing threshold is first recent insertion of the pacemaker. As with more, insertion, more recent insertions, the, the insertion is too soon. After a while, there is a ram of fibrosis around the electrode, and this increases the pacing threshold. Other factors that we all, I think, we will agree that we meet these factors in the OR hyperkalemia, hypothermia, uh, hypothyroidism, severe hypoxia, myocardial ischemia or infarction, antiarrhythmic drugs, especially amiodarone. We sometimes give amiodarone without noting that pacemaker is inserted and may increase the threshold. Factors that decrease the threshold include stress and anxiety, sympathomimetics, anticholinergics, glucocorticoids, hyperthyroidism, and hypermetabolic states. Recently, it was discovered that lidocaine has no effect on pacemakers. It was first thought that lidocaine will increase the pacing threshold as it is an antiarrhythmic and local anesthetic. But, but it is proved recently that it has no effect. Types of cardiac pacing, they may be temporary or permanent. Temporary pacing is used when there is permanent pacemaker, when the permanent pacemaker is not available or pending its insertion. It is available, but I will, we, we, we cannot insert it now. It is not available now. This may be transvenous, either via central venous catheter with a guide wire in the ventricle, or via a transvenous route, also via pacemaker, uh, uh, sorry, pulmonary artery catheter with pacing capabilities. This is available in some institutions, not here. Uh, transcutaneous pacing via pads attached to the patient's chest and transesophageal and transthoracic via uh, needles inserted to the thorax of the patient, inserted inside the thorax. It escapes the skin, that's why it's transthoracic. It is now almost obsolete because we, we are using transcutaneous instead. Permanent pacemakers are implanted most commonly in the pectoral left infraclavicular region, but it may be implanted in the abdomen or the other side in the, left, in the right infraclavicular region. Uh, it has a mercury zinc or lithium batteries. The mercury zinc are uh, relatively uh, shorter life, uh, three years, or uh, than the lithium, that is 10 years. Now there is MRI compatible devices this, that solved an, a big issue for us, uh, the giving an, an, doing an MRI for patient with pacemaker. This is a Medtronic. This is a company, and it is MRI compatible. Problems associated with uh, cardiac implanted electronic devices include um, problems as related to insertion. For example, this uh, video shows a patient with pacemaker that had a uh, pneumothorax on his left side. This is almost tension pneumothorax. It is pushing even the mediastinum to the left. Uh, it is an, as we can see now, that it is uh, an ICD because there is a coil in the SVC and a coil in RV. So we, with X-ray, we can now diagnose that this is an ICD. Um, other problems may include battery failure. Uh, without noticing, some devices may no notify us that the battery is failing when the pacing rate is decreasing. 10% indicate that this device battery is turning down. Uh, diaphragmatic or, uh, sorry, arrhythmia induction. This may uh, occur with VOO or AOO pacemakers where the pacemaker may give its pacing electricity in the relative refractory period and push the heart to VF or VTAC. Diaphragmatic or skeletal muscle stimulation, this more commonly seen with transcutaneous pacing. Myopotential interference, this when the patient's movement or uh, muscle movement may give the pacemaker a sensation that the heart is beating. And if the pacemaker is inhibited, uh, of, uh, uh, its response is I, inhibited, it will not give a pacing. This is dangerous. 
pacemaker syndrome this is uh, when the pacemaker first used it was gave, uh, pacing the ventricle only and pacing the ventricle while the atrium may be contracting makes the cardiac output struggling the valve will not open well the uh, AV valve will not open well and will decrease the cardiac output substantially until they discovered that this problem is occurring and started to invent the, um, the sequential modes and DDI and whatever. Microshock hazards, this is still uh, a big possibility because we are attaching an electrode to inside the myocardium where any electricity at reaching the generator or reaching the, uh, the lead may reach the electrode and causes a VF to the patient or a burden to the myocardium. Related to electrode placement or traction, this is a, a picture of the myocardium in our hospital where a pacemaker actually penetrated the ventricle and the surgeon is pointing at it with the tip of the, the device he is using. It is penetrating, it may penetrate the ventricle, not just attach it. Um, maybe also related to electrode traction, if a, pa a patient improved and he does not need pacing anymore, we want to remove the electrode for the patient to have a availability to, the ability to do an MRI, for example. If we do traction on the electrode, it may cause invagination of the ventricle and the severe shock to the patient. Or it may cause rupture of the ventricle, or it may go out, but no one can judge which of which. False discharge of AICD by benign morphology or rate of the heart. This is a big problem. If the AICD senses that the patient has a VF and the patient does not have it, the, the AICD will give him a shock that is not indicated. And shocking a, a, a peaceful heart may push it to VF or VTAC. Unipolar uh, pacemakers are contraindicated with AICD for this reason. Electromagnetic interference, and this is the most common or the, the, most, the thing that we all know about, electromagnetic interference. Electric signals picked up by a pacemaker or cardiac implanted electronic devices, whatever it is, from any source may have a devastating sequelae on the, his, the heart of the patient. Sources include inside the hospital, electrocautery or electrosurgical unit, uh, MRI or defib. As we see, this is a warning in, in, on the, the door of an MRI facility. It is forbidden to, for the patient to just step inside the corridor of the MRI. No one can judge the magnetic power inside the corridor of an MRI. So MRI is absolutely contraindicated to these patients un unless they have MRI compatible device. Household devices include microwave, electric razor, telephone transformer. Where do we may encounter a patient with CIED? This is another issue. We may encounter a patient with CIED for insertion of CIED, where we are dealing with the patient's uh, uh, original disease of heart to block, sex sinus syndrome, whatever. And here we, we are usually, or we are to tailor the anesthetic management of this patient according to his condition. He may have heart block, uh, heart failure, symptomatic bradycardia, malignant arrhythmias, or whatever. After insertion, this is the other area of interest, where we may meet an, a patient with these devices in the OR, in diagnostic or therapeutic radio, radio uh, radiation, in ICU or emergency department, or in electroconvulsive therapy theaters. Can I continue or anyone feels asleep? Okay. Let's start. This is the beginning of the lecture, and now we are beginning, inshallah. Uh, anesthetic management of a patient with CID will be classified to pre, intra, and post-operative, as usual. Pre-operative management starts with history, History is crucial to these patients. 
history taking is very important because it may give me idea about the cause of insertion, date of insertion or, and maintenance of these devices. That is very important. It, I may find the ID card of the device with the patient and I see the recommendations of the electrophysiologist that inserted the device. A specialist evaluation report. This is important to ask for if the report is available. Uh, as an ASA uh, guideline to ask for these reports in our facilities, and we will see how. Battery and proper function, we should make sure that pacemaker is working well via ECG, via history, asking the patient of syncopal attacks, asking the patient if arrhythmias is, is reoccurring re re to him. Uh, if he is receiving any shocks, he will feel it and he may report it. Uh, we ask about anticoagulation. Actually, anticoagulation is, are, are not used for uh, pacemakers per se. We, anticoagulant may be uh, given to the patient for other medical condition. It may be AF or DVT or whatever. But per se, anticoagulant is not an indication for pacemaker. Uh, pacemaker is not an indication for anticoagulant. Pain over the pulse generator that may raise uh, uh, suspicion about infection uh, around the bucket of the pacemaker. We may ask about comorbidities in the patient and medication he is receiving. Investigations include 12 read ECG, that's very important. It will show me the pacing uh, uh, spike and it will show me the, where is the pacing is occurring. If it is occurring in the right ventricle, it will give me a, a picture of left bundle, branch block, it, and vice versa. Um, absence of electrical activity may give rise that the patient is not paced at all, or the pacemaker is an inhibited mood. Spike not followed by QRS, this may give rise to the failure of capture. This is a big issue. Chest X-ray is also very important. It's more important in emergency patients where we cannot take history from the patient. I just put, make an X-ray of the chest and I can make a good deduction that this is a, a CRT, for example, or ICD. There is two coils. I can see coils in the RV and LV and atrium. Um, other investigations that are relevant to us are serum, potassium, and electrolytes. Hyperkalemia may, uh, may in increase pacing threshold, as we said. Uh, hyperkalemia has the opposite effect. Preoperative preparation of these patients, identify the manufacturer, type, and mode of CIED, have it interrogated by a specialist with a documented <coughs> written report. A documented rep written report and interrogation of these devices with a specialist is an American Society of Anesthesia guideline. We should do it for every patient elective. Determine patient's underlying rhythm, rate, and backup pacing support. The most important in this question is to know whether the patient is pacemaker dependent or not. Because whatever the precautions I'm taking in the OR, if the, all these precautions failed to pace the patient, will he die or not? Should I be extremely cautious or not? This is uh, the, uh, the value of these questions. If present, turn off all rate and anti-tachycardia response if they are present. Consider increasing the pacemaker rate to optimize oxygen delivery in major cases. Correct any electrolyte abnormality prior to elective surgery, as we said, as we said it may alter the uh, pacing threshold of these patients. Emergency drugs should be readily available, and so, do, so does uh, uh, emergency pacing, transcutaneous. And we should confirm the magnet response, and if it is required, we should confirm with the electrophysiologist that what will the magnet do to this patient. Intraoperatively, we start with monitoring, and the most important monitor, as usual, is you. A vigilant anesthesiologist with frequent palpation of patient's pulse. ECG, I should disable the artifact mode of these uh, to detect the pacing spike. 
um, and continuously monitor peripheral pulsation to know if the pacemaker is capturing or not. This is done via pulse oximeter, pal palpation of the pulse, or an arterial waveform. Uh, central venous catheters and pulmonary artery catheters are better avoided if the CIAD is recently inserted less than two weeks because they may dislodge the lead or the electrode and they are considered safe after six weeks because there is a rim of fibrosis around the lead and electrode that stiffen it and make it uh, more stable. Other more monitors are routine in tidal CO2 non invasive blood pressure and temperature and uh, considering TE it is safe for use in patients with, with pacemakers. This is the magnet. Uh, the magnet of pacemaker, its application is not an advisable practice for all patients. It is not an advisable practice. Why? Because it may give me any response, as we will see. And because each CIED has a specific response to the magnet. The one who knows the, the response is the electrophysiologist, and me if I revised his report. The magnet may cause uh, may turn the pacemaker to asynchronous mode, this is good. Or may turn it off permanently, this is, uh, I think, not that good. And, or turn it off transiently, this is, especially in OR, will not be happy with it. Or make a reprogramming to the pacemaker, and you can choose a surprise for reprogramming. It may give you any program. Regional anesthesia is considered safe, and we should rule out uh, patients receiving any anticoagulation and revise his uh, coagulation profile. General anesthesia induction, etomidate is, uh, may cause myopotential and may cause interference. Saxonacoline is better avoided because of the fasciculation it does may be sensed by a pacemaker as the patient's own rhythm and they stop pacing. Uh, or maybe sensed by an ICD as a patient in, is fibrillating and giving him a shock and putting him to fibrillation. Um, Defascalating dose may decrease this uh, problem and putting the, page, the, the pacemaker to, uh, to an asynchronous mode. Maintenance of anesthesia considered. This is the American Society of Anesthesia guideline too. Consider avoiding CIVU, ISO, and desfluorine. We have halothane or TIVA, or we will wait for uh, xenon, inshallah. Uh, avoid nitrous oxide, especially if CIED is recently inserted, because it may, there may be a bucket around the, the device, and using nitrous will increase this bucket and may dislodge the device from the pacemaker, from the lead. Uh, avoid drugs that, or, and situations that can increase pacing threshold, as we said. And avoid drugs that suppress the AV node or SA node. Specifically, this include potent opioid, adding CIVU, ISO, desflurane, and potent opioid. Okay? And dexmedetomidine, to have nothing to put the patient to. Uh, we still have TIVA, we still have uh, less potent opioid and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. It's not an idea to, to stop giving these drugs or avoid using them. According to the uh, FDA, electrocautery causes, in a study of 456 patients, it caused an, an adverse event, event in 255 patients. More than 50% of patients adverse effects occurred because of electrocautery. This is why we are much interested in electrocautery in these patients. Hazards include inhibition of CIED, random reprogramming, myocardial bird, unindicated shock if the AICD was not deactivated prior to surgery. Unipolar cautery, it has two modes, cutting mode and coagulation mode. We see in this diagram the cutting mode is continuous electricity with a very high frequency reaching one or more megahertz and continuous 100% of time while coagulation it gives burst of electricity with a gap in, in between. This is why the recommendation is to use 
if I have to use unipolar, it is better to use a cutting mode because the pacemaker will not be fooled in this. He will easily understand that this is not the patient's thread. No electricity is 100% of time. And still the recommendation is to use it for a short burst. One second in every 10 seconds, for example. Coagulation mode may induce more serious arrhythmias and it's more serious because the pacemaker may be fooled and think that this is the patient's own rhythm or more disastrous, think that this is a VF and choke the patient for it. For it. Bipolar is considered safe. Monopolar, pure cut is better than coagulation. Use short bursts, one second every 10. Electrosurgical unit current should be the lowest functioning. We should not increase it. The, the surgeon gave us a, a, a gift with a patient of pacemaker. We give him another gift. We will, you will not use the electrocautery. Okay? Never have the generator between electrocautery and the ground plate. This is crucial. If we put the generator between both, the, the whole current will pass through the generator and all what I'm, I'm afraid of will happen. I should, we should not be... Uh, Electrocautery should not be used within 15 centimeters from generator and that's why it's safe to do any surgeries below the umbilicus or do any uh, electrocautery device below the umbilicus. Change the pacemaker mode to asynchronous and emergency pacing is of utmost importance. Post-operative management in ICU, these patients should be managed in ICU with a backup pacing facility. Avoid shivering of the patient to avoid myopotential interference. Turn on the AICD and re-evaluate uh, the pacemaker function. If rate enhancement uh, um, was stopped, we may activate it again. Special situations include defibrillators. The use of defib while the patient is inserting a, a pacemaker, we should uh, have some precautions, avoiding putting the paddles over the CIED directly. Better to keep a distance of 15 centimeters, as we said. The lowest effective energy should be selected, may cause, uh, and it may cause electrocard endocardial burn and acute increase in pacing threshold, as there will be fibrosis around the lead, as we explained. Electroconvulsive therapy, we are afraid of myopotential interference, and hence asynchronous mode uh, is better to avoid myopotential interference. MRI it is an absolute contraindication unless the patient has an MRI-compatible device. Lithotripsy is contraindicated only if the pacemaker is impl implanted in the abdomen, where it will be very near to the field of lithotripsy. And we should avoid focusing the beam near the pacemaker, and we should consider asynchronous mode. Radiation therapy generally is safe. Consider repositioning the device uh, if it is in the uh, radiation field. Radio frequency ablation, avoid direct contact with the pacemaker and keep it as far as possible. Now our facility, CIED in our KMC, this is the work they do here. They actually do almost everything. This is a CRT patient while in the cath lab. Um, as we see two coils, one in the SVC, and this is a bipolar electrode, for, for example. It has a tip with a, a, a disc proximal to the tip. This indicates that this is a bipolar electrode. And behind this, there is a, a coil in the right ventricle. So um, they are doing CRT here. Who should we contact if we met a patient with a pacemaker? We should, we should contact Dr. Nadim Raja. He's a cardiologist and electrophysiology consultant. This is his phone number. We need to contact him if we met a patient like that. And this is Mr. Mohammed Shum Shumrani. He's a cardiac physiology specialist and the cath lab manager. We should contact this man too. Thank you. Any questions?